Hi there, and welcome to my basic team building guide for Seralem Ultimate. I'm Icon, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to build up a successful team that can kick down any opponent. So, in this video I'm going to go over the fundamentals. You will find timestamps in the description box that will lead you to the topics this video will cover. These topics are important for every team. No matter what specialization you play, these cornerstones will make your team more effective if you improve on them. So with that out of the way, one more thing. This video is aimed towards beginners and intermediate players. If you are already in the deep and late game, maybe you'll find something you can work with in this video, but most likely I think most things you will already know about. With that out of the way, let's get started with what I want to call the basics. So every team in this game works pretty similar. In this tutorial we're going to work out with a Hell Knight because that's a pretty uh, easy to understand character class and without an example things won't work out. So my basic procedure for team building works like this. First, I check out the perks of my character class. These are your passive skills that your character has. Then I try to select creatures that will work well with those perks. After that's been settled down, I'm trying to find a fundamental damage mechanic to kill my enemies. When that's settled down, I try to find a sustain mechanic that works well with this build to keep my creatures alive. And when I'm down with that, I'll put, put up something to give my creatures some scaling proportions so they grow as the fight goes longer. And these are the most important things. When you have these down, your team should be able to progress in the game quite easily, depending on your resources, of course. Okay, those are the basics. Let get, let's get into the details. So first, I want to talk about the traits and perks. This is the start of your journey. So for example, here the Hell Knight class focuses a lot around attacks and when you're new you won't have the perk points to buy every perk like i did here so first look for perks that have a high impact and sort them out first it's very much worth saving 100 perk points for something in particular also keep in mind that you can always reset your perks at this uh at this thing here so you can freely experiment. For the Hell Knight, early high impact uh, traits, for example, are Enduring Rage, my creatures attack one additional time. Kindling, I get a free spell cast at the beginning of a fight. Or, wait a sec, the combo of Magma Diver, giving my creatures a permanent access to Splashing and Savage buff, they just have it always. And Reckless Abandon, Abandon which states out that as long as my critters have Savage, they always deal critical damage. That's massive. And these are synergies. And these are things you want to keep an eye out for. You want to avoid the more situational perks at the beginning. For example, Dreadnought is a wonderful one. My creatures' attacks can be dodged. Yes, that can be absolutely cool in like 10% of your fights. Enduring Rage will be cool in 100% of your fights. So always ask yourself, how often will it occur, this perk, and how much of an impact will it have? At least that's what I do. So once that's settled, you're looking for creatures that work out with your, uh, with your perks well. So for example, here I took the Azura race that focus around critical hits. So your creatures can have traits. Let's talk about that first before we go into what these traits do. Every creature has one trait that's like a passive ability that is either buffing the team, buffing themselves, influencing their behavior in combat, or manner of shenanigans. So one trait per creature makes six traits by the creatures alone. Then every creature can be fused with another one, making it absorb the trait of the creatures so you end up with a creature with two traits so that that makes it up to 12 traits this is as a beginner and intermediate player most likely your limit later down the road when you are more and more wealthy artifacts have a trait slot too where you can forge so-called trait materials into which give you a a third trait per creature so virtually your uh, 
your limit will be 18 perks at some point when you're wealthy enough. After that, there are a couple of methods to forge even more traits into, but as a rule of thumb, try to get your game plan down with 12 perks or less, ideally. The other things, well, trait materials are random drops. You can't really, uh, you're, you're out of, uh, you're out with RNG in that department. Whereas creature summoning and fusion is pretty reliable, is a pretty reliable source of traits. Okay, so I think let's we'll talk about the trait here, for example, to show you a simple synergy. This heals my creature whenever they deal critical damage. That's pretty neat because, you know, we have already established auto crit and this dude here gets a free attack whenever somebody else deals critical damage you get the idea so for that's the perk traits you're looking for that synergize well with your own perks and that's what you're looking for and that's all i have to or all i wanted to say about traits and perks so far now the next part of your team building process is the damage you will want to look for two things in 90% of the cases. The first thing you're going to be looking for is your fundamental way of beating the enemy. So in this scenario, we're looking into our perk, uh, into our perk bar again, and the Hell Knight excels at dealing tons of damage via attacks. So you see here we pump up the uh, critical attack damage. We can we gain the ability that splash spreads over the damage to all enemies instead of only adjacent ones. So it's pretty clear that the Hell Knight is really good at attacking and that's what I utilized with this one. So let's get back to this dude. So he gets a free attack when somebody else crits, everybody crits, check. His crits though, they deal more damage. So whenever somebody attacks, he whacks as well, but he whacks harder than anybody else. And after he attacks, he also has a chance to cast a Volcano spell, which is hitting everybody. So, pretty neat. And beyond that, you'll be looking for other methods of dealing damage. So, for example, this dude here, after he deals critical damage, he has a chance to attack again. This is pretty, pretty nice. And here I added in something more meta or... or obscure so this one says basically whenever my dudes start whacking an enemy more than once in a turn every subsequent attack grows stronger by 25 percent i figured since i have so many multi-hit thingies i wanted to have that as well but you see in the end you'll be looking for something that works out with your perks and your creatures trait just traits just to kill the enemy pretty well the second part you'll be looking for is what a lot of people like to curl, call turn zero or turn one burst. This means find a way to deal damage before the enemy even gets to act. In the case of the Hell Knight, this happens via the Kindling trait. So, at the start of battle, the first creature costs Firestorm. So what I did here to utilize this fully, I picked up a creature who has a Intelligence Bias. I equipped it with an artifact which yields extra intelligence, an extra spell potency, and this is already a solid nuke in the first turn. There are other methods to implement that. A lot of classes have traits to implement that uh, strategy, but you can always put that up to give you a practical example here with the Wolves uh, race. These dudes have a wonderful trait uh, school that works like this my creatures first three damaging spell jams have a chance of being cast automatically at the start of battle this is your free turn zero nuke if you don't have anything else just take a volps fuse him with a strong spell caster equip an artifact with lots of uh, with lots of intelligence and such and equip a couple of aoe spell gems done you'll be having a decent nuker for free which is available for every character class just in case you were wondering how to pull this off and you want to have an example this is really decent just combined with a good spellcaster i personally um went for the you can also go for the um the combo of the skyward wolves so you can 
just uh, yeah you can't do a lot of shenanigans with that all right but i don't want to go too deep into that how to deal damage is one part of the deal you'll have to figure out for yourself but your perks will give you a hint just look for the creatures that synergize well with that okay so after you have ruled out the damage part at least theoretically or practically the next thing to think about is the sustain because none of your creatures will ever be or none of your teams will ever be able to to just one shot everybody in the first turn that won't be happening so for the sustain part as usual we're looking into our perks first the hell knight doesn't have anything in that regard which is kind of sad but this is a very offensive character class so what to do in that scenario so if you don't have any defensive perks you will have to rely on different things my personal favorite in that regard is a couple of traits that work especially well together the first thing that i want to introduce here as free sustain for everybody if you want to say so is the ent race you know living trees as soon as i find them here the ends they get they give you a trait that gives your creatures always mending and even a damage reduction while being while, while being so nice mending is a regeneration at the turn's start pretty powerful you can combine that with other end traits that all cycle around the mending uh buff but honestly they are really good and most of my teams end up with at least the ebony end or something like that because you know it's dirty cheap it's pretty good at sustaining your team but it won't be enough won't be enough another thing that's really good for example of my hell knights here to give you another idea i'm working here with leeches the leech race excels at the stat leeching as the name already implies um, give them any second, believe me. So, leper leech. So leeches can give you give your creatures the ability to always have leeching. So when they attack something, they heal. Remember, we already had that part. Whenever we crit, we heal. But in this scenario, you can also give yourself more buffs in that uh, in that department. There's lots and lots of different mechanics to heal yourself. It's up to you to discover them, but I think the Ents and the Leeches are really good pointers if you're new to the game and you're looking for something that you can rely on. So, finding your sustain method is important. Really, really important. But it's not only about healing, it's also about resurrection. Sustain is not, about, uh, not only about healing, but also about resurrection. What's really powerful in that regard, what I really love to use, are a couple of life spell gems. So my personal favorite that I love to use is Requiem. Of course, I know when you're starting out, you won't have access to all of these spells. That's why I'm introducing a couple of them. So Requiem will re resurrect all my creatures with a moderate amount of health pretty powerful spell of course every other form of resurrection spell works minor resurrection major resurrection to name only a, a couple standard resurrection there's really a lot of light spells that do the trick and i'd highly suggest you to have these because you know without some sword of resurrection your game plan will fall flat in longer fights because some monsters can just uh, outright kill an enemy just by a trait without dealing damage just boom you're dead so because this sucks there's another good spell that i want to feature here and when it comes down to sustain sacrifice to the light when the caster dies it resurrects with 100 person health it cannot be cast manually and it only works in normal battles but this one really is a nice safety button that you can't just equip to your creatures if you have it beyond that Another good spell that really paid off for me to have when I needed some sustain was Nourish. My creatures gain Mending, you know, if you don't want to go down the, the end way, that's also a way. But yeah, I mean, other honorable mentions here go to Benediction, a massive heal for everybody. I really, really like that one. And Breath of Life being a strong single target heal or a resurrection which is also pretty good but you get the idea all right another thing that i want to uh, 
showcase here with these spell gems, something that I always use is the generous property. This means that when you're using generous means that every creature gets a free copy of that spell gem at the beginning of a fight with one job with one charge. That means every creature has one spell of Requiem available, one spell of Resurrection available. This is really, really good if you want to uh, if you want to provide some some reliable so sort of resurrection in your team. Okay. That's enough about the sustain department. I think you got the idea. It's really important that, or well, one one last thing. With the sustain, it's important that you do as much as possible, but only as much as necessary. Overdoing in the sustain department will lower your performance altogether pretty hard. Just worth mentioning. Now, scaling is the next topic we're going to talk about. So scaling is the art of growing while the combat lasts longer. And here, usually you'll have to grow creative or you'll have to follow your perks. Some character classes are more about scaling than others. They have, imp they have perks implemented that give them stat growth. Scaling here in this game is most of the time gaining stats. So in this scenario, I took advantage of the leeches that gave me a trait here. And I personally find that a very, very easy way to increase your stats. So the leech devourers trait says that whenever my leeching creatures attack, they gain 10% attack, intelligence, defense, and speed. That's what I'm utilizing because I have lots of free attacks. I have leeching and this increases my creatures stats whenever they attack. So basically the longer the fight grows, the more terrible this grows. Another thing that I worked out, which also falls into the scaling department is this trait here. Whenever my creatures are healed, they gain a random buff. You remember, we have leeching, we have mending, we have heal, heals on, on hits. So why not buff myself like a crazy dude, you know? And here, that's uh, another thing here, but I want to talk about that in a sec. And let's see, creatures always have leeching, that's the sustain portion. Oh well, I I, uh, I, I want to talk about this one uh, too, because he's uh, this is falling between sustain and scaling. Defensive traits like this one. My creatures take 5% less damage for each time they've taken damage. That means after 18 blows, they will have a flat 90% damage reduction. This is uh, something I personally consider scaling because it lets my damage reduction grow whenever I got hit. But scaling does not only go into offensive stats, but also into defensive stats. That's uh, worth mentioning here. So this dude here gives my critters 20% maximum health whenever they attack or get attacked. So in combination with the singularity, my creatures gain extra stats equal to 10% of their current health. You see, it synergizes again. So whenever we attack, we gain health. When we gain health, we gain stats. When we leech, we gain stats. So this uh, this cycles out of control quite quickly, and that's what we're uh, what we're after. So another thing, well, that falls into the sustain topic. Well, oops, I overlooked that one. After my creatures with leeching take damage, they are healed for a portion of that damage. Pretty neat one too. And here. This one falls also into the scaling category. Whenever we gain stats, we gain a portion of maximum health. And you can already see, my creatures will either gain health and gain stats, or gain stats and gain health. And these things cycle pretty well with one another. And these mechanics can be used with practically any uh, team. That's the nicest part about it. So to give you a couple of good simple scaling uh, options. I'll give you a couple of examples here. My personal best friends in that department are the Kolos. The Kolos are a race of creatures that have a lot of uh, scaling uh, things here. Here, our Hardy Appetite already uh, introduced that one. I just want to show you the creatures to that. So this comes from the Kolos. Whenever you gain stats, you gain health. It's super powerful and I love it. The Kolos Doombringer deserves an honorable mention here as well. Whenever my creatures are healed, they gain a portion of that as maximum health. And 
The other dude is found in the demigod branch. Hmm. Here. Omnipotent Deity brings the Singularity, which gives you stat increase for based on your current health. If you have nothing else to work with, the easiest way that I found was giving my creatures max health when they are healed, because healing is easy to come by, giving my creatures stats when they are uh, when 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 they gain max health. So this, uh, basically, this uh, cycle that I'm using here is applicable to every creature. Wait a sec. Here, Singularity. Hmm. Already Appetite. And... What's the last one? Singularity, Already Appetite, and... Well, okay. You get the idea. Just basically, when you don't when you don't have any perks to grow with, and that I don't have these, I just uh, chose traits to work with. So I think there's not much more to say. So you're looking for something which just increases your stats somehow. There's plenty of other options for to give you another uh, quick example here. Among the spirits, we have one that. Uh, Gives you extra defense after your creatures are healed. A couple of the... Uh, there's a... Uh, among the bats one, another... And then I'm going to go over into the last step here. Of that, to of that tutorial here. So... Here, after an ally attacks, this creature gains 7% speed. So there's plenty of methods to increase your stats one way or another. There's also ways to get that job done in a per turn basis. Let's talk about the priests real quickly. Here, priests. So at the start of this creature's turn, it increases your other creature's attack by its own by a percentile amount of its own attack. These are pretty good if you're still poor. So yeah, you get the idea. The scaling part is really important when you want to be successful against big bosses. Most of the time you will have trouble with bosses because you're not scaling enough or you didn't have enough sustain. So one thing about the scaling thing, I want to introduce a couple of spell gems that are useful here. One thing that doesn't really fall into, into that category, but it is a thing to counter the enemy's uh, scaling. So Dispel, remove enemies' buffs and debuffs. Greater Dispel removes all debuffs and uh, buffs of the... Uh, your creature's debuffs and the enemy's buffs. Really, really powerful one when you can get your hands on it. And there's also Mass Dispel. If you don't have... This is the worst one in my opinion, but if you have nothing better, it disperses everything on the whole battlefield. Pretty good to get the buffs off of your enemies, and I always run a Greater Dispel in my team on Generosity to switch off the buffs if necessary. Another thing here, targets minions are removed. It's really uh, worth mentioning to have one banish in your team because minions can be a really big problem if your enemies scale too hard. Another thing worth that I wanted to talk about is if you fail to get scaling down with creatures, for example, if you just don't find any, uh, any mechanic that increases your stats, you can always use spells for that regard. So light and nature magic feature a lot of uh, wonderful spells that just give you a lot of stats per se. So uh, let's go for life magic here, for example, here, charm of life. My creatures gain a moderate amount of stats. Breath of life, no, that was not the one. Um, where was it again? Yeah, here, Determination, my creatures gain a large amount of defense and health, and so on and so forth. These are also methods that I want to mention in the scaling part to close off this topic. When you fail to find traits that help you with the scaling part, you can always rely on spells. Just keep in mind one thing, these scale off of intelligence. The higher the intelligence of your critter casting the spell, the more stat gain you'll produce. And you can always mod these spell gems to give you more to give you more stat increase. 
Okay, so now let's go into the last topic that I want to mention as an ending for this one. That's the artifacts. I, I want to give the artifacts an honorable mention at the end because they are a big pillar of versatility in your team. So not only can you configure stat bonuses here that fit to your team, but also there's um, trick slots and trade slots. I just wanted to talk about these a, a moment here. So trade slots, I already uh, introduced them. So trick slots are giving you the option to either spread out buffs or debuffs when your creature deals damage but i personally love a lot the uh, trade materials dodge chance because that's just massive you know increased chance to dodge flat cool stuff and extra spell gem slots also very very worth mentioning spell potency if you have a spell caster just slap that on you will find a big big difference there and for all of your attackers slap on attack damage on the artifacts of those really does a big change the other things here on the on the trick slots are all more uh, situational and not worth mentioning not worth being mentioned too hard here just wanted to make sure that you know that in the trick slot there's a couple of things that you just want to use almost every time so this flash stomper here doesn't have his attack damage here upgraded already so there we go. Another thing there, you can also call, uh, use spell slot and um, slot in any spell into the spell slot. I haven't fully figured out yet how these work, but the spells in the weapons in the artifacts slot are randomly cast. As far as I've seen, you have not access to them in the spell book of your creatures. You will have uh, a chance of them procking in between. That's how I understood how spell gems work in your artifacts. And yeah, that that's how you build up a routine, basically. You're looking for, to sum it up one more time, synergies between perks and traits. You try to build up your damage mechanism first, because you know you want to be able to kill everything. Then you're looking for the sustain, then you're looking for the scaling, and then you're, then you're uh, adapting the artifacts. The order of these things is important because you have only a limited amount of uh, of uh, trade slots and if you run out of trade slots before you have your damage part down that's really bad if you run out of trade slots before you have your sustain down that's also really bad so always uh, put the scaling part as the last one and grow from there on and a last word here of advice if you're struggling with the early game and you're early on just go into the depths that you can beat and farm the level of your creatures up. It's really a massive help. And early on, it you'll, you'll be beating down your enemies mostly via the level alone. But if you follow these strategies that I uh, mentioned here by the best way that you can implement them, I know that the earlier you are in the game, the harder it is to cross the uh, check marks off of this list in this video but it should really help you to get done with the main story and enjoy the game. I hope that was helpful for you. Drop your comments down below if you have any further questions or things you think that should have added into this video. Also, leave a thumbs up if you found that helpful. And last but not least, consider subscribing. I'd be really, really happy to have you. And there's daily content coming up from my side. You only need to turn on the notification bell to stay tuned. And I'd be really, really happy if you'd also check out the description boxes links down there. There's a link to my Twitch channel, to my Discord channel, and also links to direct support of my video stream project, which I'd be super happy if you check them out. But whatever you do or don't, thank you so much for watching this video to this point. It really means a lot to me. And see you guys next time. Bye-bye.